Hello, welcome back to my kitchen. Today, we're finishing out the spooky season with mummy meatloaf. And the recipe does not tell you how to make mummy meatloaf, it's just bacon wrapped meatloaf. You gotta kinda put your own little artistic flair on that and try and make it look like a mummy using some extra onions to make the eyes and the teeth. But even though it's kind of like a novelty, this is a super good meatloaf recipe. Like, it has best in the title, which I'm seeing a theme from Bon Appetit. They put the, the term best in a lot of their stuff. But it honestly, they write. This is an accurate statement for this one. And not just to take my word for it, my mom, who doesn't like meatloaf, I made this recipe for her and she was like, this is actually really good meatloaf. So from a person who doesn't like meatloaf, they like this one, you make it. Make this one, even if you don't wanna make it look like a mummy, just make it normal. I do that a lot of the time as well. It's a great meal prep meal. Uh, it reheats really well, but let's run through the ingredients and then get into cooking. Onion, garlic, ketchup, apple cider vinegar, brown sugar, cayenne, chicken broth, parsley, eggs, breadcrumbs, parmesan, salt, pepper, ground beef, and bacon. The first step is going to be like the prep step. So we have the onions that need to be grated, so that's a little bit different today. And then garlic that just needs to be chopped up, parsley that needs to be chopped up. And then, I mean, technically, there's the breadcrumbs like that I made. I'm not gonna show you that, but I assume most people are probably just gonna buy breadcrumbs, but for me, this step would kind of involve prepping those, which is just blending up frozen bread ends that I save because gotta, gotta keep that money, gotta save, save it up because every penny counts. Little did you know, cooking and economics are what I'm teaching you today. The next step is just gonna to be to cook the onions and the garlic. That's just throwing them on the stove top. About four minutes, easy peasy. The next step is a, in my opinion, critical step. Because some people they're like, oh, you put ketchup on top of meatloaf. And I'm like, no, like technically yes, but you, it, like that ketchup needs to be elevated, which is what we're doing in this step. We're gonna take the ketchup, the apple cider vinegar, brown sugar, and the cayenne, put that in a pot, uh, stir that up, let it uh, get up to a boil, then we're gonna simmer it for about five minutes so it kind of becomes thick and like syrupy. Ooh, like it just makes it like sweet and acidic and it's just so good. So if you've never had meatloaf with something like that on top of it, I'm gonna say this numerous times in this video, make this one or something similar to that because your life will be changed. Next is, I'm not entirely sure what to call this. It's kind of like, liquid flavor, <laughs> I don't know. It's going to be the chicken broth, the parsley, and then two tablespoons of that kind of ketchup mix that we just made in a blender, blend it up. It's, I mean, A, it's pretty cool because it turns like green from the parsley, but it's also gonna make the meatloaf real tasty.
Now it's time to kind of bring a lot of the things that we got together and we're going to take the onions that we cooked a while back and have that in a large bowl along with the parsley smoothie thing that we just made and then also the breadcrumbs, eggs, parmesan, salt and pepper. And I think that's, I think that's it. Pretty much you're adding like everything except for the sauce. You're gonna mix that up and then after that's kind of been mixed together, then you're gonna add in the ground beef and then mix that by hand. So make sure that you have like a clean available sink nearby because your hands will be very messy. So you're gonna need to wash them right afterwards. Uh, but kind of make sure that that is evenly mixed together. Next is on a baking sheet that has foil and then parchment paper, which I don't know why it's doubled up like that. I can't really think of like the benefits of having both those. I feel like one or the other would be just as fine, but the recipe calls for both of those. I have both of those, so I'm putting both of those on my pan. So we want to roll out the meatloaf mix that we have in that large bowl onto the baking sheet. And this is where I'm kind of deviate from the recipe itself, and I'm going to shape it to look like a head, a little bit more than a loaf. Hopefully my artistic sculpting skills are up to the challenge, which I don't really have any of those. So it's gonna be interesting. I mean, to me, it vaguely looks like a head, so I think I'm in the right ballpark. Now we're going to take that ketchup mix that we made on the stovetop, pour that over top, kind of evenly spread it all out, and then we're gonna start making the mummy. Uh, I, from the onion step, I probably should have mentioned it then, but I mean, I don't think anybody's cooking along. So I just saved a little bit of the onion, kind of cut two in vague oval shapes to make the eyes and then a handful in kind of like rectangular shapes to make the teeth. And the bacon is gonna be kind of the wrapping of the mummy. And I recommend maple bacon, and that's just because it smells fantastic while it's cooking in the oven. And I think I like the sweet and savory aspect of like this recipe will just go through the roof if you use maple bacon. It's good without maple bacon, but it just kind of kicks it up like an actual little step. So this is where you get to be a little creative and try and make it look like a mummy. So I'm just gonna kind of be laying them out and hopefully it works well. Usually I work from a picture, but because I'm gonna be filming, I will not have that reference. So it's just all gonna be from my noggin. And that's a, I don't know how I feel about that. Like I've done it before, so I feel like I should be fine. But at the same time, I'm like, the second I start filming, I'll be like, I don't know what a mummy looks like anymore.
I think it looks pretty good. You can let me know how you would rate my mummy. Is it the mummy with Brandon Fraser or the mummy with Tom Cruise? And you know which one of those is the good one and which one is the bad one. Look in here, you know the answer. So the next step is to actually bake the meatloaf. And so that's gonna be at 350 for 70 to 80 minutes. So this is a, a big cooking time commitment. So you shouldn't be doing it late at night. Only an idiot would do that. We're not idiots here, are we? I'm definitely not. All right, I don't wanna pour grease everywhere. But here's the creation. It's gonna be in the thumbnail, and if somehow that doesn't work, it's gonna be on my Instagram, but I need to put this down. So I don't need to really sell this anymore because I've said numerous times already to make this. So go make this. Uh, and I would recommend kind of having on the side mashed potatoes and then possibly like roasted Brussels sprouts or some kind of green veggie. Gotta have a balanced diet. It's, it, it smells so good in here. That maple bacon is just, oh. And even though it's, it's collapsed a little bit, like the one eye, I don't know if that's bacon that just kind of fell off of it or what, but it's still gonna taste fantastic. It might not look the best, but that's the thing. We're going for decomposing mummy, so we're kind of falling apart a little bit. Just adds to that, to that vibe. I'm just trying to justify my artistic abilities here. I know that it's gonna taste good. Does it look good? I'll let you decide. But I'm about to go eat a very late dinner because I'm a poor planner. And I, I don't think I need to, to tell you anything else. Like go make this, have a spooky Halloween, and I'll see you next week when I'm doing something more Thanksgiving theme. I need to figure out what that's gonna be. And on that note, bye mom, still not dead. See ya.